In a fairly recent video, I featured a device that you plug into a USB power supply and it boosts the voltage up for powering things like 12 volt loads. There is another option. I'm going to have to zoom down this because it's very tiny. And it's a USB power delivery module. And what this does is it's got a little chip in it, a dedicated chip, and you can set the voltage you want from a range of um, 5 voltages, 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt. And then you can plug it into a suitable power supply like this IKEA power supply. And when you plug it in with its appropriate lead, you will then get the required voltage out. So before we go any further, I want to mention that if you're just looking for how to program these units, the information is down in the description uh, for this specific module. It doesn't relate to any other module, just this specific one with the circuitry in the back and the dip switch and the connectors on the front. Okay, so before we go any further with this, I am going to... Um, Set this up with one of these power supplies. This is a real good quality IKEA power supply. This is a fake Samsung power supply, and we'll try all the different voltages. So we'll start off with 5 volts. So the first setting is with all the switches off, and that should put out 5 volts. Incidentally, there is a little red LED in the back of this, very dim. It will effectively get brighter, as you'll see in the circuitry, because we will reverse engineer this, and I'll show you how it works. But at this point in time, we plug it in... Uh, Connect the meter to it and it shows 5 volts. Now let's try that with the clone. And as I would hope, with the clone, we also get 5 volts. Okay, that's the Samsung clone, which I uh, covered in a different video. Okay, the next voltage setting is going to be all the switches on. Let's see what happens with the clone for a start with that. So has it renegotiated for 9 volts? It has. It's putting out 9 volts. Let's try the IKEA. And you can see already the little red LED is getting visibly brighter. So this should be 9 volts from the IKEA power supply. And we are getting 8.9 volts, which is perfectly acceptable. That's our 9 volts. The next setting is for 12 volts, and that's on, on, and off. So this should have renegotiated for 12 volts now. And it is showing 11.9 volts. Good enough, that's 12 volts. How's the LED doing? It's definitely getting brighter. Let's try it with the clone. And the clone, the Samsung clone, is measuring 12.3 volts, which is fine for 12 volts. OK, what's the next voltage we want? 15 volts, which is on, off, off. So is this renegotiated 15 volts? No, it's not. OK, let's try the IKEA power supply. And the IKEA power supply is delivering 14.9 volts. That's perfectly acceptable for 15 volts. OK, let's try 20 volts now, which is on, off, on. So that's on, off. So this one should go up to 20 volts. 19.7, that's perfectly acceptable. That's the IKEA power supply. And the LED is much brighter now. Definitely a lot brighter than it was before, but it is still quite low current. OK, let's try this in the clone power supply and see if it does manage to muster, because it does say it can do 20 volts. But you know what? Sometimes they tell little porkies. So let's plug that in. And I can already see the LED isn't super mega bright, but we'll see what we're going to get. What are we getting for our 20 volts? 12 volts. It only candles up to 12 volts, despite what it says on the packaging. Okie dokie. Excellent. Uh, it's worth mentioning that one of the reasons they negotiate with the higher voltage is that, say for instance, you've got a USB cable capable of passing 2 amps. With a 5 volt supply, that would give you 10 watts charging, but with a 20 volt supply, that gives you effectively 40 watts charging because it then gets converted back down in your phone and it uses much higher current to smash current into your phone's battery. Okie dokie. Right, tell you what, I'll bring in the picture of the circuit board now. And here is a close-up of the back of the circuit board where all the magic happens. Now, it's worth mentioning, the IKEA power supply is very heavy, and this Samsung clone, not actual Samsung, is uh, very light. But it used to be heavier until I removed the steel weight out of it. They cheated in many ways. They don't even deliver the correct voltage. Anyway, let's take a look at the circuitry. Under here is the USB connector, and literally the USB-C connector, its positive and negative connections effectively just go to the terminals on the output. The 
Chip gets a 3.3 volt supply via a resistive dropper, just basically a 1K resistor and this capacitor here. Now, if we do the mathematical computations and we bring in the kink calculator um, and we say 20 volts minus the 3.3 volt that it's dropped to by a shunt regulator, 3.3, oops, 20 volts, which is the maximum it's putting out, uh, minus 3.3, equals 16.7 volts to drop across a 1K resistor is 16.7 milliamps. So let's work out the power dissipation of this resistor times 0 0.0167 equals about 0.28 watts. So that the reason that resistor is a bit bigger is because it's actually dissipating a fair amount of power, but mainly at the um, 20 volt setting. Um, the LED... The power indicator LED is just a 10K resistor in series of the LED, so at 5 volts it's very dim, and at 20 volts it's four times brighter, roughly. Um, other than that, we've got a four-resistor array here. This is just four separate resistors in one package. Three of them are used as pull-up resistors for the switches on the other side, and uh, one of them is used to sense the V-bus, which means the chip itself is sensing the presence of the actual the voltage bus, maybe to detect when the power has been interrupted and then reinstated again. Not sure. Or maybe it's just double-checking on the voltage. I don't know if it can actually do that. But this is a CH224K chip. Nice that it's actually got a number on it. It is a dedicated chip. The reason I've drawn the green under here, also note the green is the negative here, because uh, I'm doing blue on a blue circuit board is doesn't show up too well. But the reason I've show, shown that little line there is because there is a pad under here, and that is the main negative connection to the chip. It's also used to dissipate heat probably from the shunt regulator to a degree. I don't know that's being done by that. Um, odd, I wonder why it should get hot. Odd. But anyway, the dip switch arrangement, well, let me show you the, um, the schematic. But the main thing is the other connections here are you've got three configuration inputs, which is the dip switch positions. And then you've got CC1 and 2, which goes to the USB connector, and DMDP, which also goes to the USB connector. And they're used to negotiate that uh, voltage change. Let me show you the schematic. And here is the schematic. So here's the USB-C connector, and there's its positive and negative going straight to the output, and here. Um, and there's the LED just basically clamped across that output with a 10K resistor. There are the four communication lines that it uses to tell the device that it is a load and also negotiate the voltage that it wants. There's a power supply for this chip, 3.3 volt supply with that 1K resistor and a 1 microfarad capacitor. And then there's a 10K resistor for monitoring the V bus. I kind of want to know why it does that now. One moment, please. And the data sheet said uh, just voltage monitoring. It doesn't have a uh, block diagram the inside of the chip, which means it can't really work out what that's for. I guess it's just to validate where the voltage has gone up or down, but why would it even need to do that? Then we've got the configuration inputs. Um, I'm going to actually label these. One moment, please. They are labelled. So these are three inputs that you put a binary code on and it represents a voltage and I don't think it will support any voltages out with the standard codes. It's also wor worth mentioning that it supports power delivery versions 2 and 3. I'm not sure what we're currently up to. I should hope they're backward compatible though. But the switch inputs are actually pulled high by... That's wrong. There's an error on this schematic. Uh, one moment, please. A foolish mistake, but one I have now connected, corrected. So these uh, resistors are actually fed from the VDD pins. Have I literally written VDDD? Right, excellent. Maybe I'll just correct that mistake as well. That is what I get for making videos late at night. But the VDD, the little power supply that's created 3.3 volts, is also feeding the end of those resistors, which would normally pull the configuration pins high, but when you close these switches, it pulls them low, so that switches are effectively, the logic is inverted. So when you've got the switch on, it means that it's a zero, and when it's off, it's a, a one. So that's why I'm saying that uh, in the description of this video, the guide to the switch positions is specific to this configuration because I can't guarantee that it's going to be the same between different modules.
But that's more or less it. When it uh, gets power, it monitors these inputs, and when it sees the switches in a particular combination, it negotiates the power, and that increases the voltage on that rail up there. It means it's quite a useful device, but it also introduces the slight risk that if things went wrong, you may end up with 20 volts on low-voltage circuitry. But other than that, it's quite a smart little module and has plenty of uses. Um, and it's quite nice, as I say, that it is based around a standard chip. That makes a refreshing change from the usual microcontrollers. So the information and a link to where you can get these, they're really cheap. They're at about, about a dollar or so each. Uh, the information of where you can get these is down below. And uh, also the information about how to use them is down below with a chart of the switch settings for the specific voltages.